In this video, we're going to focus on solving tension problems. So in this question, a rope is used to lift a 50 kilogram box with an upward acceleration of 2.3 meters per second squared. What is the tension in the rope? So let's say this is the box. And the rope is lifting up the box. The force that acts along a rope is the tension force. So how can we calculate this tension force? What can we do? Well, we need to set up a free body diagram. We need to identify all of the forces that are in play. So we have the upward tension force, the downward weight force, and also the net force. Now the net force is in the upward direction because the whole object is being lifted up. So the net force in the y direction, which can also be written this way, it's going to be the tension minus the weight force. So it's T minus W. Our goal is to find T. Now, the net force is equal to MA. Since the force is in the y direction, the acceleration is in the y direction. And so we've got to add W to the other side. So MAY plus W is equal to the tension force. And the weight force is simply mg. So if we take out m, the tension force is going to be the mass times g plus the vertical acceleration. So this is the equation that we need. So now let's get the answer for part a. So the tension force is going to be equal to the mass of 50 kilograms times the gravitational acceleration plus the upward acceleration of 2.3 meters per second squared. So 2.3 plus 9.8, that's going to be 9.8 plus 2 is 11.8, and then if you add 0.3 to that, that's going to be 12.1. And then we got to multiply that by 50. So the tension force is 605 newtons. Now, if you want to compare it to the weight force, the weight force is mg. So that's going to be 50 times 9.8, which is 490. So notice that when the rope is used to lift up the object with an upward acceleration, the tension force is greater than the weight force. But now, what if the rope is being used to allow the box to slowly descend? Intuitively, we know that the tension force should be less than the weight force if the box is descending with a, a downward acceleration. So let's get the answer for part B. So M is 50, G is 9.8, but the acceleration, because it's downward, it's going to be negative 0.75 instead of positive 0.75. So 9.8 minus 0.75, that's 9.05, and then times 50, this is going to be 452.5 newtons. So as you can see, the tension force is less than the weight force when the object is slowly descending with a downward acceleration. Now let's work on this problem. What is the tension in the two ropes in the picture shown below? Now notice that the crate or the box, whatever you want to call it, it's in equilibrium, it's at rest. So therefore, the sum of all forces in the x and in the y direction must add to zero. So when you see a problem like this, you want to break down T1 and T2 in it, into its components. T2 has an x component and a y component. T1 also has an x component and a y component, T1, y. And the crate also has a weight force. Now, because the object is at rest, because it's in equilibrium, the net force in the x direction and in the y direction must be zero. So let's focus on the forces in the x direction. This one is in the positive x direction, 
so that's positive t2x. This one is in a negative x direction, so it's negative t1x. And because the object is at rest, the net force in the x direction is 0. So if we add t1x to both sides, we can see that t1x is equal to t2x. Now, tx is t cosine theta. ty is t sine theta. So t1x is going to be t1 cosine theta. t2x is t2 cosine theta. You can call this cosine theta 2 if you want and cosine theta 1 to distinguish these two angles. So for t1, the angle that's associated with it is 60. So t1 cosine 60 is equal to t2 cosine 30. Now cosine 60 in degree mode, that's 0.866. Actually, no, that's 1 half. That's 0 0.5. Cosine 30 is 0.866. So let's divide both sides by 0 0.5. 0 0.866 divided by 0 0.5. That's 1.732. So T1 is 1.732 times T2. So let's save this equation for later. Now let's focus on the forces in the y direction. So we have two upward forces, T1y and T2y. So they're both going to be positive. And we have a weight force in the negative y direction, so that's going to be negative w. Now, because the object is at rest, the net force in the y direction is 0. So I'm going to add w to both sides. So w is equal to t1y plus t2y. So these two upward tension forces must balance or support the downward weight force. So the weight which is basically mg. That's equal to t1y, which is t1 sine theta 1, plus t2y, which is t2 sine theta 2. So m, the mass, is 60. g is 9.8. And t1, we don't know what that is right now. But theta 1 is 60. And theta 2 is 30. Now, 60 times 9.8, that's 588. And sine 60 is 0.866. Sine 30 is 0.5. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace T1 with 1.732 T2. So we got to solve this using substitution. Anytime you have two variables, you need two equations to find or to solve those two variables. So now this is going to be 588, which is equal to 0.866 times 1.732. If you multiply those two numbers, you're going to get a number that's, if rounded, 1.5. And then let's add this to it. So 1.5 plus 0.5, that's 2. So 588 is equal to 2 times T2. So 588 divided by 2 is 294. So that's the tension force in this rope. Now using this equation, we can find T1. So T1 is going to be 1.732 times 294. So just take this number, plug it into this equation. And so T1 is about 509.2 newtons. So now we have the two tension forces. So this is, well, these are the answers. But now let's check our work.
Let's make sense of everything. So here's the 60 kilogram box. And it has a downward weight force of 60 times 9.8, which is, as we know, 588 newtons. Here's T2 and T1. So T2 is 294 newtons. And at an angle of 30, T2x is going to be 294 cosine 30. So that's going to be 254.6. Now T2y, that's 294 sine 30, which is 147 newtons. Now T1, that's 509.2. T1x is going to be 509.2 times cosine 60, and that's 254.6 newtons. And then T1y, that's 509.2 sine 60, which is 440.98, or you could round it to 441, just to keep things simple. So what we need to do to make sure our answers are correct is to make sure all the forces in the x and the y direction, they add up to zero. Let's focus on the x direction. This one is in the positive x direction, so it's positive 254. And this one is in the negative x direction. So these two, these two forces, they cancel out. They add up to zero. Now let's focus on the forces in the y direction. These two are going in a positive y direction. So let's put a positive sign in front of them. And this one is going in a negative y direction. So if we add these two numbers, 441 plus 147, that's 588, which balances out the downward force of 588. So all the forces in the x and in the y direction add up to zero. So which means that these two answers are indeed correct. So it's just a simple way for you to check your work to make sure if your numbers make sense. Calculate the tension in the two ropes shown below. Now this problem is a lot easier than the last one. I think it's much more simpler. But let's identify all the forces we have. So we got the downward weight force. We got T2, which is directed towards the right. We have T1, which has an X component, T1X, and a Y component, T1Y. So let's start with the forces in the Y direction. This force is upward, so it's going to be positive, T1Y. This force is downward, so it's negative W. And those are the only two forces directly in the Y direction. And because the object is at rest, the net force in the Y direction is zero. So the weight force, if we add W to both sides, the weight force is equal to T1Y. And T1Y is T1 times sine theta and theta 60. Now W, the weight force, is mg. So now we can plug in everything we need to calculate T1. The mass is 100, the gravitational acceleration is 9.8, and then we have sine 60. So 100 times 9.8 is 980, and sine 60 is 0 0.866. So 980 divided by 0 0.866, that's 1131.6 but I'm going to round it to the nearest whole number, so I'm going to say it's about 1132 newtons. So that's the tension in this rope. That's the value of T1. So now let's calculate T2. So let's focus on the forces in the x direction. Now T2 is a positive force. It's directed in a positive x direction, so we're just going to write that as T2. T1x is in a negative x direction, so I'm going to put a negative sign in front of it. And this is going to be zero because the object is in equilibrium. So if we add T1x to both sides, we can see that T1x is equal to T2. So T2 is equal to T1x, and we know T1x is T1 cosine theta. T2 
one is 1132, which we have down here. And theta is 60. Now cosine 60 is 1 half. So this is 1132 times 0 0.5. So half of 1132, that's 566. And so now we have the two answers. But just like we did before, let's check the work. Let's make sure all the numbers uh, make sense. So the downward weight force is 100 times 9.8, so that's 980 newtons. T2 is 566 newtons. T1x, that's 1132 cosine 60, so that's 566 going this way. And T1y, that's 1132 sine 60, which is 980 newtons. So the fact that the y components, or the forces in the y direction, uh, matches, that's good. That means that we're on the right track. And the forces in the x direction, they cancel as well. This is positive, that's negative. This is negative, that's positive. So all of the forces in the x and in the y direction add up to zero. So the object remains at rest. It's in equilibrium, which means that these two answers are correct. So now you know how to solve common tension problems in physics. So keep in mind, tension is simply a force that acts along a rope. That's it. So whenever a rope transmits a force, typically by a pull in action, that force acting through the rope is the tension force.